Alright, so let's put together these, or put these principles to work in some of the homework problems. And number nine says a customer can choose one of four amplifiers. So four amps. Um, one of six CD players. CD players. And one of five speaker models for an entertainment system. So that's the number five, and this is the word speakers. So one from the amp, one from the CD players, and five, one from the five speakers. So here's the four possibilities for amps. That would be six coming off of every one of those, and off of every one of these there would be five uh, branches coming off that represent all the speakers that you could possibly choose from. So we see we have the event that you pick in amp can happen four ways. The event that you pick a CD player can happen six ways. And the event that you pick a speaker it can happen five ways. And this would be 60 ways. 60 different ways that can happen. So just a little warm up into the fundamental counting principle. Alright, how about 11? 11 would be a 10 question true false exam. How many ways could you answer that true false exam? So it, you know, it's going to be really important that you start to think in terms of event 1, event 2, event 3, event 4. What, how many events uh, are there? And this, uh, being so many years away from this, it, it's funny to think that it was difficult. But it is difficult, I think, for every person who starts doing this to to sometimes think what what is the string of events that happens here so in this one it's uh, event one is that you answer the first question in the then the second one is the event that you answer question two the event question three the event for question uh, four five six seven eight nine and ten all right so we go back to the event that you answered the first question how many ways can that happen what's well, a true false so it's either true or it's false so two different ways question two also true false two different ways two ways all the way down the line. This is 2 times itself. 10 times this is 2 to the 10th. That's 1,024. 1,024 ways you could answer a 10-question true-false exam. Um, let's see. Let's get into some permutations and some kind of um, interesting permutations like 21 which has a part A and a part B so 21 part A says three couples go to a concert they have reserved seats they just have six seats that they can sit in there are three couples that's six people and the first part A says there are no seating restrictions so how many different ways can they be seated uh, no seating restrictions just means nobody cares where they sit, who they're sitting next to, everybody's friends, and so they can carry on a conversation or, you know, not be able to carry on a conversation because they're at a loud concert. But they don't mind who they're sitting next to when they're listening to that loud music. So how many ways could that happen? Well, they get six people. Anyone can sit here, any of the six. Then definitely he can't sit here if he's already sitting there. So five, and then four, three, two, and one. The event that somebody sits down in this first seat, six people could sit there, one of six people, one of the five remaining, and so on. And if you remember, this is six factorial. That's what this means, that exclamation point. It means not that you're emphatic about six, but that you're going to multiply six by every number before it. And that, I happen to know, is 720. Part B, we have to think, uh, we have to be a little tricky. This says that each couple wants to sit together. You know, the, the boyfriend and the girlfriend and the husband and wife, whatever, they want to sit next to each other. Now, as far as which couple sits to which, which other couple, it doesn't really matter, but just that they sit together, that the couple sit together. But if you think about uh, the fact that if, if they can't be separated, if they don't want to be pulled apart, then they're like one unit. So really, you don't have six people, you have three couples who want to sit down. So this would be the, the set of two seats where the first couple sits down and, and on down the line. 
So you got three couples for the first, and then two, and then one. Okay. Um, but then, for all of these arrangements, whenever they sit down, now you have like this little mini scenario where um, each couple has to decide how that couple is going to sit. So you'll not only take three factorial, okay, but then how many ways, you, you multiply that by how many ways can this first couple sit down? Well, they could sit, you know, boy girl or, or girl boy. So that's two, really, in truth, two factorial ways. Okay, well, then the second couple has to decide. So they can be seated in two factorial ways. And then the last couple could be seated in two factorial ways. So we'd multiply all of these together by the fundamental counting principle. Okay, so for every way that everybody sits down, for every way that all three couples sit down, then within the couples, they have to decide how they're going to sit. So you have to multiply by the two factorial, two factorial, two factorial. Uh, so that would be 6 times 2, 12, 24, 48 ways for them to all sit together. Uh, and Okay, yeah, that's it. Um, all right, back to it. Um, let's look at some problems. What do you think about that? Um, right. Number 34. I'm so glad I unpaused my recording so that you could listen to me choose 34. But 34 is uh, and how many ways can four people sit in a four-passenger car? It's pretty important that it's a four-passenger car, because uh, they can only... The, the car is full. So if we, if we prefer, we could think about a car, and we could break it open inside there, and here's a, a seat, and here's a seat. We're looking at it from the, from the top. So somebody's got to drive. Uh, let's assume everyone is allowed to drive, so any of the four people can do that. Then then any of the other three people could ride shotgun, and then uh, any of the two remaining people could sit back here behind the driver, and then uh, the last person has to sit there. So it turns out four times three times two times one is just four factorial. This is probably really limited by whose car it is and who's fastest at calling shotgun and who feels more comfortable sitting behind the driver because the driver will tend to protect their side of the car first by instinct, so... Uh, this may not be uh, truly random, but it is four factorial, and so we know that. Um, here we go. Number 37. Now we're going to not just order everybody, but only some of the people. Out of 12 candidates... We're gonna choose. We're gonna we're gonna pick out uh, people to be president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer. Uh, and how many ways can those offices be filled by those twelve different people? Um, now again, we could do the uh, uh, twelve times eleven times ten times nine. That would definitely do it, right? Any of the twelve people could be president. Then the next person would have to settle for vice president, then secretary, and then treasurer, and so on. Um, but we want to view this as a permutation of R things out of N things. We want to recognize it as this. We're going to permute or order R things from N things. Uh, here we're ordering uh, four things, four people, and we're arranging them in a specific order. We're, we're picking them out of 12 people, 12 candidates. Remember, if you go back to the video or if you wrote this down, that would be 12 factorial. That would be the orderings of all of the people, but we don't care about all the people, just the top four, just those four that are going to be in that, those four positions. So we don't want the bottom eight, or we don't want the bottom 12 minus four, which is eight. It's good to get in the habit of using this formula, because once the numbers are really big, it just gets really cumbersome. So this would be a good opportunity to, to let you know if you don't know, uh, if you use a TI style calculator, graphing calculator, 
you'd want to be able to take 12 factorial and divide it by 8 factorial. So here you have your second button, here you have your alpha button, and uh, you know all the other buttons are, are everywhere else. And here below the alpha button is the math button. Okay. And once you get into the math button, you want to go over to PRB. And then from there, you want to go, you'll see it. You want to go to the factorial button, which I think is selection 4. That's the factorial command. So you type in your number 12, and when you grab that factorial command, go into the math menu, go over to PRB, that's to the far right, or you can press left, and it'll jump over to the far right, and you go to the fourth selection, that's factorial. All right. So, pretty straightforward. Um, it's because, not that I'm a big baseball fan, but I have many friends who are baseball fans. And I sure do like those friends. So in homage to those people, uh, we'll talk about batting order. How many different batting orders can a baseball coach create from a team of 15 players if there are nine positions to fill? Uh, and uh, a batting order, it's called an order for a reason. Order is important. We, we care who's batting fourth. That's a pretty important position in the batting order. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much all I know about batting orders. But... Uh, we know that we have 15 people to choose from. That order is important, and that we are choosing out of those 15 people, nine of them. If we wanted to order all of them, we would do 15 factorial, but we don't want to do that. We just want we want to get rid of those, the rest of them that aren't the top nine. Okay, we only care about those those nine people, and then we don't care about those 15 minus nine people. Uh, how they don't get in the batting order or how many ways they don't get in the batting order is, is doesn't really make a difference. So that would be 15 factorial over uh, 6 factorial. So this fac 6 factorial would divide off that 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and leave us just with the 9 that would be filling the batting order. So there's another example of NPR. Let's try 45. It's just a, a permutation of a set of things that has repeated items. Uh, and that, those, or that set of things is a set of letters that makes up the word algebra. But how many ways could you rearrange this into a different order? Uh, so if all of these letters were different, then it would be pretty easy. It'd be 7 factorial. But there's some same letters in there. So uh, say, for instance, these well, actually, A's are the only thing that are repeated. So for every time you rearrange all these letters, uh, 7 factorial would be viewing these A's as different. And if it switched those A's, it would think, I've come up with a different word. But you know that it hasn't. So you want to divide out that 2 factorial for the two repeated A's. And if anything else was repeated, it would get its own factorial, and you would divide by that. Um, actually, I should. Um, see. Let's go with 43. And it's these letters. A and another A. G, E, 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 M. So we start with all the letters. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 factorial. And then divide all the repeated ones. So divide by 2 factorial because of the two repeated A's. And the three E's, how many ways could we order them, and therefore how many times are we counting the same word over and over? Well, you can reorder those E's in three factorial ways, and there we go. So in your calculator, uh, you may get frustrated and be putting in the wrong thing. So this is a calcu calculator screen. If you type in pretty much straight what you see here, you'll do 7 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 3 factorial. But remember that your calculator is very strict about order of operations, and it will do uh, division and multiplication in the order that it sees them, unless you tell it something else. So it'll do this division first, and then multiply that by 3 factorial, which is not what you want. You want the 3 factorial to be in the denominator, so you need to tell it with parentheses. That's where it is. It's in the denominator. Okay. So just a quick aside there. So, Senate, blah, 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 makes a, a committee of 14 members. Uh, 
if party affili affiliation is not a factor in selection, how many different committees are possible from the 100 U.S. senators? Each state gets two senators, and there's your 100 senators. So from those 100 senators, how many ways are there to make this committee? If you, if you pay attention to the, the question, it's just a committee of 14 people. There aren't offices that are held. There's uh, not a, a most important person and a least important person. It doesn't matter who you are. You should, in a committee, have an equal voice. So there's really no, it's not important what order it's in. Uh, once you've selected those 14 people, whether they stand from tallest to shortest or oldest to youngest, it's still the same committee. Um, so if you're going to choose 14 of them, 14 for committee. A lot of repeated letters in committee, I think. Yeah, I can spell committee. Uh, so we're going to take 100 people, and we're going to take 14 of them uh, for a committee in a way where order doesn't matter. We we're not reordering them. We're not permuting them. We're not finding their permutations. We're not using P. We're using C. C stands for combination. A combination of people is just, or, or C maybe stands for you for a collection. Right? It doesn't matter what order you have them in, it's still the same 14 people. It's the same committee. Right? So if we were to order out all of 100 of them, that would do that. And then we were thinking, well, we don't care about all 100, we just care about the top 14. So then we would divide out 86, uh, you know, from, from 86 on down to get rid of those. That would just be 14 of them. Uh, and then we don't want to count the, you know, how many ways there are to order those 14 people, so we divide out that 14 with 14 factorial. And if you need something more detailed than that explanation, then watch the previous video. Uh, but there you go. It's, you got your 100 factorial. Uh, you want to uh, narrow that down to the 14 people, so you divide out those 86 that you're not concerned about, and then. Uh, since order doesn't matter, we want to divide out that 14 factorial ways there are to, to reorder those 14 people, because it doesn't matter what order they're in. And All right, um, let's do 65, just because this is kind of a question. This is super fun. So uh, a poker hand, but a specific kind of poker hand. How many full houses can you make out of a poker hand? Um, so how many ways can you get three of one kind of a card and two of another kind of a card? Uh, that's the question. So let's see. So we kind of have to combine uh, picking and choosing things uh, and think about does the order matter here uh, with the fundamental counting principle. So let's think, ooh, here's one event. Uh, three of a kind, and then you have to have a, a pair besides that to have a full house. You got three of a kind here and a pair here, you call that a full house. How many ways can you get three of the same card? Um, let's think of it this way. Let's, inside the parentheses, think, well, what does it mean to get a three of a kind? It means you get three kings, or you get three aces, or you get three twos, or whatever. So let's, let's imagine that we're just working with kings. How many ways are there to get three kings? Uh, well, there's four kings, and you want to get three of them. And you're going to get them out in a way that order does not matter. It doesn't matter if you get whatever king first, second, or third. It's just the same three kings. Uh, so for, for that specific example of kings, uh, that would be how many ways you could get three kings out of the four kings. Or this is the same as how many ways you could get three twos out of the four twos, or three aces out of the four aces. Um, and you can see I'm listing all those different ways. This, this actually represents um, just one of those ways. And how many different ways are there for that to happen? Uh, well, it happens for however many different kinds of cards are there There are. So you got ace through ten, then you got jack, queen, king, that's a total of thirteen different cards that you could get three of. Right? There's thirteen different kinds of cards you could get three of, so we want to multiply 
this by 13, because we do this in any number of 13 ways. Um, so let's come over to a pair. How do you pull a pair? Well, again, we want two of a kind. We want two of the same card. So out of four cards, four kings, four queens, four jacks, or whatever, uh, we're going to, without respect to order, take two of them out, and that would be our pair. That's how many ways you can make a pair uh, of fours. Or this is how many ways you can make a pair of sixes. Um, now, this pair is going to be different from this three of a kind. It can't be a three of a kind of kings and a two of a kind of kings. That would that could get you in a lot of trouble if you're playing with some pretty serious poker players. Uh, you can't have five kings. So we can't include whatever this was, so this would be 12. Okay. So this represents how many ways you can get a pair. This represents how many ways you can get a, a three of a kind. Um, and so we would multiply those two together, and that would be uh, 3,744. If we really wanted to write this out, we do 13 times 4 factorial over 3, fa or I guess it would be 1 factorial times 3 factorial times 12 times 4 factorial over 2 factorial times 2 factorial. And that should turn come out to be 3744. All right. So uh, just a, a little bit from here and there about permutations, combinations, fundamental counting principle. Hope it was helpful.